Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hello and welcome to Postscript. My name is Adam McIntyre and I am joined by Ben Stewart who just gave an awesome sermon on Luke 7. And uh, th Ben, thank you so much for being here with us today. Really appreciate yeah. you being here. Be um, I want to start off with a couple just real qu uh, quick questions based on the, the contents of your sermon. Yeah. Um, the first one was you gave a, um, a really nice illustration at the end of this man who was a drug addict who was kind of sleeping by the river right. uh, Thames. And then, um, Quickly, could you go over who that person is again? Yeah, Francis Thompson. Okay. Uh, he wrote uh, The Hound of Heaven. What I quoted was not The Hound of Heaven, but he wrote that. That's probably his most famous piece. Gotcha. And uh, I intersected with him through a book Robbie Zacharias wrote, Can Man Live Without God? Okay. Is how I found out about him. So. Great. So that's us. Yeah. Francis Thompson. Great stuff. Francis, Francis Thompson. Thompson. Yeah. And uh, another quick question um, someone wrote in was asking if the anointing of Jesus in the book of Luke, Luke is the same anointing that he received uh, at Bethany that was mentioned in the book of Mark. Yeah, that's actually a common question because it shows up in Mark and John and, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, Matthew. So, uh, and there's things that are similar about it. Right. Jesus is anointed. He's at the house of a person named Simon. Right. It's a woman anointing him. But they diverge pretty pretty powerfully from there, that this right. one's clearly at uh, Simon the Pharisee's house. This mm -hmm. one was at Simon the leper's house, which lepers can't be Pharisees. Right. One's at the beginning of his ministry, one's at the end. Um, and you go, well, Luke's roughly chronological. How do you know that? Well, mm -hmm. this one, the emphasis is about the forgiveness of this woman who was known for being a sinner. Okay. This one is about uh, Mary mm -hmm. and Jesus will say, this is about my burial. Right. Uh, and, uh, and so there's enough differences in what's happening in those two that you go, these are different moments. These right. are totally different moments. The Luke one, the Pharisees didn't want to murder him yet. They didn't like him, but right. it, it moved from, I don't like you to, I want to kill you okay. about midway point in his ministry. So, so they're two different moments, uh, but that's a great question. Great. Thanks so much for clarifying that. I really appreciate that. And so, um, let me ask you this question. So you highlighted in your sermon, how, um, this woman who, um, her sins were many, um, came before Jesus, completely vulnerable, completely humble, completely broken. Um, and then Jesus says, uh, your faith has saved you. Your sins are forgiven. In that moment, is Jesus forgiving her sins right then? Or is he simply announcing something that he's recognizing in her, that her sins are indeed forgiven? Yeah, I would say he's announcing it based right. on the flow of the whole story. Right. I mean, if you follow, he chose that parable he told mm -hmm. to help describe the moment of what's happening. Right. And you go, what, what was the order in the parable? It was debtor cannot pay, mm -hmm. debtor forgiven, right. forgiveness produces great love. Right. And then he looks at this woman and says, do you see these things she's doing? Mm -hmm. They demonstrate great love. Therefore, I say to you, her sins are forgiven. Right. So he was not putting it after, then that story would make no sense. Mm -hmm. What he's saying is, what we're seeing right now is evidence right. of forgiveness received. So when he looks at her, what he gives her is assurance, mm -hmm. which is the last piece. Right. You know? So if we're looking at our own life, you go, what comes first? Jesus' announcement of forgiveness offered. Okay. We receive it by faith. Mm -hmm. When you receive it by faith, it produces love in the human heart. That love motivates action. Mm -hmm. And that action, Jesus sees and says, love is there because faith was there, that forgiveness was there. Right. It's kind of like a tree. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, if the soil is the forgiveness of God, her seed is faith, okay. right? The tree is love. Right. The fruit is her actions. Okay. And yeah. Jesus is going, I see fruit because this is a tree because there's a soil. Done. He's just taking it back down. If right. That makes sense. Yeah, no, it makes perfect so, sense. Yeah. It's and a so great I, question. And actually, there's a follow-up question about that assurance piece. Uh, someone was wondering, you know, let's say that they have repented and they've asked for forgiveness um, and they've also asked um, uh, for Jesus to be their Lord and Savior. But then after that happens, they end up falling back into that same sin. And it just kind of becomes this cycle of falling into the same sin over and over and over again. And so th um, their question was, uh, how can they be sure um, that they are indeed, that they do indeed belong to Christ, even though they keep falling into that same sin pattern over and over again. Yeah. 
Well, I would say um, you have to go back and say, what is my salvation based on? Mm -hmm. It is based entirely on the work of Jesus. You know, so again, go back into this story. Mm -hmm. How is the debt forgiven? Not by anything the debtor does in his story. Graciously forgiven by the money lender. Mm -hmm. That's how you know. How am I saved? His gracious work on my behalf and my reception of it. So you keep going back to that. Forgiveness is by the work of Jesus alone. And so you go, if I keep struggling with it, I have to believe what he says. If we confess our sins, Mm -hmm. he is faithful and just to forgive us of all our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And yet you go, what if I keep struggling with it? I would say, does he forgive you? Yes, but we are meant to repent. Mm -hmm. One of the fruits of forgiveness is a changed life. And so you have to ask yourself, um, have I repented or do Mm -hmm. I just know, "Ah, I know he'll forgive me and then I can just keep rolling along my merry way. That cheapening of grace Mm -hmm. shows that you never understood your sin in the first place. You're missing that piece of, I believe I'm really this bad Mm -hmm. and I believe I need to be saved. So... I would go back to, do you even understand how deep the stain goes? But then I would also point you to James. James says, confess your sins one to another Mm -hmm. and pray for one another that you may be healed. And that's where I see a lot of people is they'll struggle with a sin, want it out of their life. Mm -hmm. They ask God for forgiveness, but they keep doing it. And uh, and it steals their assurance Mm -hmm. because they don't see the fruit. So there's no assurance. And they go, so am I not saved? You go, well, you have no assurance Mm -hmm. of your salvation because you're not seeing outworking. God has given you a sanctifying tool called us. Right. You confess your sins one to another. Mm -hmm. So I I meet with a lot of guys that struggle with pornography. And as long as they keep it in the dark, they'll just keep doing it. But when you tell them you have to confess it to me. Right. And you repent it with me, mm-hmm. not to get forgiveness, but to change. Right. That, that begins to get it out of their life right. and their assurance rises yeah. that they really were forgiven back then because now they're seeing it work out in their life. But don't neglect the grace God has given his children, namely the body of Christ. Right. And so that's where I said repentance, sanctification, it's a team sport. Absolutely. So if you're struggling over and over again with the same sin, it might be because you're struggling with it in the dark Mm -hmm. and uh, we're only as sick as our secrets. So you need to confess to us. Absolutely. Well, and that also helps uh, too with people who maybe are blind to certain sins that they have in their lives. Just uh, being in that community constantly helps to kind of cover those blind spots. Absolutely. And then you mentioned in your sermon too how uh, one of the issues with Simon the Pharisee and with a lot of other people um, who just can't quite grasp the depth of their sin um, is pride, and a lot that pride can blind us um, to yeah. what's to to what's really going on um, in our lives and our hearts. And um, absolutely. And so, I guess the question would be, how is it that we can eventually get to the point where we can recognize the depths of our sin, where we can really? Um, what are some? You mentioned community, but what are some other ways that we can kind of cover those blind spots and really see uh, how sin is affecting our lives? Yeah. Well, I would say. You know, one of Jesus' first parables was of the soils, Mm -hmm. you know, and they were representative of the souls of human beings. And he says, the seed is the word of God. Mm -hmm. How are you going to get a crop? The only way you're going to get it is with no seed, no crop. So you need the words of God Mm -hmm. into a prepared soil, one that's soft and ready to receive it. And so like Simon, Simon knew the word of God, but his heart was resistant to change, Mm -hmm. defensive, And so it just bounces off, right? Birds eat it, that's what Jesus said. But Mm -hmm. if I have a heart that understands my need, Mm -hmm. that was what he was looking for, receptivity. Right. You know, Mm -hmm. that's what he told the disciples later. Right. Um, So what I do is I I come to the word of God knowing um, to understand the depths of my sin and need for grace, I can navel gaze and look at myself. I can do that. Or I can come to the word of God because when you see God for who he really is, it'll right size you. Right. But I know if I just come to the word of God, it can just be food for my arrogance. And so I have to come like the psalmist did and say, Lord, open my eyes that I might see wonderful things in your law. He prayed that. What's the assumption there? The wonderful things are there. I have a seeing problem. Exactly. That's the humility of coming and going, God, 
I'm not going to see the beauties of your word. I'm going to see TV is more entertaining. I'm not going to see the depths of my soul. I'm going to see some other guys. I'm not as bad as that guy. So Lord, open my eyes and I see it. And then David in the same Psalm prayed, incline my heart to your testimonies. Mm -hmm. This is David, a man after heart, God's own heart saying, my heart is going to be inclined towards other things. And I know that about myself. So for me, as soon as I come to the word of God, I come confessing need. Mm -hmm. And you go, maybe I don't understand the depths of my sin. No, but that's something to confess. (laughs) Right. Yeah, <laughs> like David, absolutely. God, open my eyes because I'm blind. Uh, incline my heart because it's not inclined. Yeah. And that's so horrible. It right. really is. But as you confess that and then come to his word, it's that, that soft soil right. with the word of God in it, that that's where uh, fruit can, can be born. And so I would say, you don't have to just sit and think about what a horrible person you sure. are. You meditate on God and, and your sin will, will rise. Right. He will point it out. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's kind of, again, going back to kind of combating that pride of uh, a lot of times we come to scripture just assuming that we are inclined uh, or assuming that we understand our sins completely. Uh, And when that happens, uh, yeah, our hearts are hardened at that point. We don't even see how arrogant we are. Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, And then uh, the final question we had, and it was a really good question, um, came in and said, um, how is it that uh, we can be forgiven at absolutely no cost? of all of our multitude of sins, how is it that God can forgive us and that cost us nothing? How is that possible? Yeah. Well, I would say um, two things. One, it did cost a lot. Mm-hmm. And number two is you couldn't pay it. Right. I mean, that's, yeah. again, let's say in the same text, mm-hmm. two debtors unable to pay. Right. So God is looking at our sin and saying, you don't you can't by your own energy come back from this. Mm-hmm. So I either let you go to hell right. or I step in. Mm-hmm. But his stepping in doesn't minimize sin. And that's the thing. Some people go, well, you just cheapen it. You say, like God goes, ah, it's all forgiven. You're like, God didn't just wave off sin. Right. Look at the cross. Mm-hmm. I remember I had a young man come to me that he said, you don't even know the horrors I've done. So you just tell me, oh, you're just forgiven. I say, no one's saying, oh, you're just forgiven. Right. I said, go back and read about Jesus' crucifixion. Mm. That's how much God hates sin, right. that it required the brutal death of Jesus mm-hmm. to pay for it. Mm. That was the payment. So does God take your sin lighter than you? No, right. he hates it much more than you, mm. but you couldn't pay it. And so God in his love sacrificed his son for you. Right. And that's where when you understand how much it did cost yeah. uh, and that he was willing to pay it, right. those two things together, the understanding of my need and understanding of his grace, how can it be? It Absolutely. produces worship. It produces love. That's the point of this text. So it's yeah. a great question. Absolutely. And uh, when you understand those things, it will change you. And then God is glorified by your transformed life. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. When we fully understand that, that's what leads us um, to look more like the woman um, in Luke 7 and less like Simon the Pharisee. Oh, yeah. Right. He changes you. And then you become a worshiper and a servant, mm-hmm. but it's all of grace. Right. You're not earning. You're celebrating. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Ben, thank you so much sure. for being here with it's us fun. today. And thank you all for tuning in. We will see you all next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.